Hello, I'm Robert Wagner, and I'm here to talk about a wonderful television show that I was involved in called It Takes a Thief. The title of the show was called uh, Once a Crook, and it was changed uh, to It Takes a Thief because at that time, Cary Grant and Grace Kelly made a picture called uh, To Catch a Thief. So the idea was It Takes a Thief to Catch a Thief. This whole, the whole concept of It Takes a Thief was created by a man called Roland Kibbe, and he created Alexander Monday. And, um, I was not too interested in doing television, so I was called in to Mr. Lou Wasserman's office, who was the head of Universal, and he said, uh, I've got this wonderful character for you to play, Alexander Monday. He said, I think it'd be great for you. And I said, you know, uh, Mr. Wasserman, I'm really not interested in doing television, and uh, I, I, I really don't want to make... Uh, I, I'm concerned about making the crossover. He said, I think this character would be absolutely sensational for you. And he said, I'd like to have you meet Roland Kibbe, and I'd like to have you take a look at the material, and if the pilot doesn't sell, I will promise you I'll make a movie out of it for you, and we'll release it as a picture. So I made the pilot. I met Roland Kibbe. We became fast friends. I liked him so very much. He was a wonderful, wonderful person. And uh, I also liked the character of Alexander Monday. I really felt, you know, that, that Alexander Monday was truly one of the greatest characters that was ever written for television. So I made the pilot. The pilot didn't sell. And Lou Wasserman then made a film called Magnificent Thief, which he put every actor that was under contract to Universal in Magnificent Thief, and it was released as a film in Europe and in the United States. And then I got a call. I was down in Brazil directing a movie, and I got a call that It Takes a Thief was going on the air, and it was going to be a mid-season replacement. And I thought, oh, my, this is, this is going to be so it's going to be a disaster because when they started in mid-season, you usually didn't make it. You either made it at that time with a pilot that was going to be a success at the beginning of the season in September, but to re do a replacement was very, very unusual if, if it ever became a success. So in January, It Takes a Thief went on the air, and it was very, very well received. It was so popular. and the character just took off. It was like you struck a match and that was Alexander Monday. And I can't tell you how thrilled I was because I loved playing Alexander Monday. It was, it was great. When I was asked to do Alexander Monday and then asked to go on television, I was a little bit nervous and uh, <clears throat> about it because, you know, I didn't really I didn't, I didn't know much about it, and to play a character for three or four years or that long. And so I, I went to my friend Cary Grant, and I asked him, you know, because as I said to you before, you know, that was, it takes a thief to catch a thief and all of that. And Cary Grant was such a wonderful man, and I admired him so much. And I went to him and I said, Cary, you know, I'm going to do this character of Alexander Monday, and what do you, what do you think? And he said, well, I, I can tell you what I think you should do. He said, I don't think you, I think you should do you. I think you should be you and try to express as much of your own personality in it as you can because there's going to be a lot of, a lot of different aspects and a lot of different things you're going to have to be asked to do. So I think I would just try to shake it all off and just try to be you in front of the camera. That's not so easy to do, I found out. And, um, I went back to Carrie on several occasions and said, uh, what do you think? Can you, have you got any suggestions? And he did, and he was so wonderful and so wonderful for me.
I was very much inspired by Cary Grant uh, as a person and as an actor before Alexander Munday, before all of that. But I was very much inspired by him, as most young actors were. And I had, you know, I had a lot of idols. I had Gregory Peck, I had Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy, Cooper, all of them, you know. I mean, I grew up with all of them. I was uh, hands-on with the scripts. Uh, I was hands-on with the casting. I had casting approval. And um, I lived at the studio. I lived at um, Universal. I had a dressing room there that they did for me that had, uh, you know, I had all my office there and everything. And I stayed there at the studio uh, during the week. Uh, I was living in the desert at that time. and. Um, I lived at the studio and was in the editing rooms quite a bit, and yeah, I, I would say I was pretty much hands-on with it. I mean, it was my career. I mean, it was everything. It was a total commitment to that character and to to the to the production. And they gave me everything. They gave me everything. They were there with me all the way. The people that were involved with it wanted it to be terrific. They wanted it to be the show. And they all contributed so much. The editors, the musicians, I mean, the theme, you know, Dave Grusin with the theme, and the, 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 all of the post-production people. They, you know, it was a hit. And uh, that's wonderful when you have a hit. You know, you don't have hits too often. To do a television series, uh, it all takes on its own life. And um, we, this took on its own life. And I had so many people that were with me on this. Malachi Throne, who was a wonderful actor who played Noah Bain. And uh, wonderful directors. And the most marvelous leading ladies. Uh, and wonderful actors who all contributed so much to A Takes a Thief. And I contributed so much to Alexander Munday because I, I really wanted to try to make this character a reactor. He reacted to the situations. And yes, he was a catalyst, of course, but I mean, you know, I had so many actors come in and they were so wonderful. And all I had to do was kind of listen to them and, and nod. And um, I, I kind of wanted to make it like the old films, you know, that, that were made uh, to bring out that kind of character so that we had wonderful people around me and they were all shining my luster. All those people that came in made me look so much better and uh, the writing was so good. We had such wonderful writers and, um, you know, people came in. Um, we had a, we had wonderful producers and we also, I also had the opportunity of, of starting off a, a young man who became so t successful, Glenn Larson, who um, wrote a script for us and I liked it very much and he loved the character and he got involved in it and he was the one that took it on to bigger and better things really. When we went to Europe we shot in, in Italy for about 10 shows and we introduced Fred Astaire who was my father and um, I mean that was so exciting to go to Fred when I went to Fred and asked him if he would do this, and he said yes, I mean, I was over the moon, you can imagine, to have Fred Astaire, who was the greatest thief of all, Alistair, uh, Monday. When we started talking about bringing in the character of Alistair Monday, which was created by Glenn Larson, the wish list was Fred Astaire and nobody else. So I had known Fred Astaire practically all of my life, and I went to him and I said, look, if it could work out and it could be worked out with you, would you play my father in the, in the show? And he said, yes. And uh, so I went back to Universal and I said, Fred Astero play will be able to, will do the, the character. But I said, you know, I don't want you to start to get into negotiations and all of that and start to get into a lot of things that they usually get into, you know, billing and dressing rooms and money and time and shooting schedules and all of that. I said, if he wants to do it, just set it up and, and, 
and, and, and, and have it work. And he said, and they said, okay. And then they started to do a lot of things with, which were, you know, less money, more this, more that, more whatever, you know. So what happened was he backed off a little bit. And when he backed off, I left the studio. I, I just left and they didn't know where I was. And I said, I'm not coming back until you get this thing straightened out because I don't want to have any kind of, you know, negative feeling about having him come in and do the show. And, you know, it got involved with agents and producers and all of that kind of thing. And they finally just said, okay, fine. And I came back and that was it. And uh, he was absolutely so great in the picture, in the show. I mean, you know, you couldn't ask for anybody else to be the greatest thief in the world and be your father than Fred Astaire. I mean, when he hit the screen, it was sensational. I did a dance number with him, you know. We were clowns, and uh, we both had on the same costumes, you know, heavy shoes and moving around and doing all that. God, I was worn out. I could hardly move, and he was dancing around like he was a kid, you know. One time we were in, one time we were in uh, Rome, and uh, we were shooting at this beautiful villa and uh, we, I, Fred and I went out to have lunch, and when we came back, all of the crew was, so, you know, kind of sitting around this big uh, ballroom of this, of this villa. And they said, Fred, 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 Fred. And he started to tap dance. And they were all, you know, all going, ah, da, 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 da. And he was dancing around, and he did one of those things where he went over to the piano and he kicked the, kicked the, the piano a couple of times, bam, 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 and it hit a couple of notes, and they went crazy. I mean, we all went crazy. It was terrific. Wonderful moment. When the show originally started, it was uh, Malachi Throne playing Noah Bain and myself, and um, Malachi was so wonderful. I mean, he brought such a presence and such a, a wonderful background to Noah Bain, and um, he, he was just great and he was so forceful and, and they got into a situation with Malachi because when we went to um, Europe to start shooting it was understood and uh, of course I, I felt that it was there was never going to be any, moment, any problem with it but they didn't they didn't think that he was it was necessary for him to be in Italy with us when we were making um, all the shows and I felt that it was definitely important and he said well look if they don't want me to be in Europe with them and uh, with the show then I'm out I'm gonna quit and they said we don't think you should be there and Malachi left the show and I was really very very disturbed by that because he was such a special contributor to it and he made it so it worked so well and we had I felt chemistry which was which was you know, so so important for any project, and it's a rarity that that happens. And uh, we lost him, and so then he was replaced with some wonderful actors. I mean, Ed Bins came in and played um, played a character, Wally, and of course Joseph Cotton, who was just absolutely terrific. I mean, to play, have an actor like Joseph Cotton play with you was it was great, but. Um, I missed Malachi. He was one of the one of the contributors at the beginning of the show, and he gave it so much. A special guy, a very special person. Stephanie uh, Powers, uh, we worked together. He, she worked with me in uh, another series I did called Switch, and and also in uh, in It Takes a Thief. And when I worked with Stephanie, I just felt I just loved her. I just felt that she was so there, and so the timing was so right, and she was just. I really thought she was one of the one of the best ladies we had, and she was a lot of fun, great humor. And when the character of Jennifer Hart came up, um, Tom Mankiewicz, my, my dear friend, uh, and hers, and Tom really created Heart to Heart. It was his concept of the title and the characters of Jennifer, Jennifer and Jonathan. And when Jennifer came up, we both said. The girl to play this is Stephanie Powers. She is definitely the girl to play it. And they had, they had some resistance to it. And then when they saw her and, and the chemistry, you know, that was again a thing of chemistry, you know. That was so fortunate that because the chemistry worked between Stephanie and myself, and that's 
what made that show happen. And um, it's like with what I was talking about before with Malachi Throne. You know, that uh, when, when Malachi, when that character came up and he came in, I mean, we just hit it like that. We just, bang, you know, we just hit it. And he was, he was such a tremendous contributor to it. And it was so short-sighted of these, of the studio not to say, hey, listen, send him to Italy. Of course, he'll be great. I mean, Malachi could step on the stage and he was, he'd light it up, you know. It was short-sighted, I thought. God, there were so many. You know, Susan St. James started on the show. I mean, that was kind of her first big gig was with us, and she was so wonderful. I mean, I just adored her. She was fabulous. And I told you, we had Ricardo Montalban, uh, who was a great friend, and he, he had a running character going on the, on the show, and he, he brought so much to it. Betty Davis um, said some very nice things about my character and about how it was uh, evolving. And she said, you know, that I was a leading man that was bringing this kind of um, quality that used to exist in the movies. And I was very complimented about that. And I called her, and I knew her. And, I, and she said, oh, I, I love the show. I said, well, would you be on one? And she said, uh, well, I'd love to be. And I said, OK, let me talk to the writers, and uh, we'll try to come up with something for you. And so I talked to the writers, and they wrote this character called Bessie Grindle. Bessie Grindle, I think that was the name of it. Anyway, and she was a thief. And uh, she loved the idea. And she came out to Los Angeles and, and did a couple of shows with me, which was spectacular to have Betty Davis, my god on the show. It was super. I mean, she was so terrific. And she was there every day and on time. And, and she, she had a joyous time doing it. I mean, she was, she was, uh, she was kicked in. She, she loved it. She had on a very kind of sexy kind of outfit, great legs. I said, Jesus, Betty, those legs. She said, well, you know, I know. What can I do? Fantastic person, lovely lady. I mentioned Joseph Cotton. Who, let me, there's so many different people. Tina Louise was on it. Uh, Senta Berger, who I just adored, uh, was in the pilot. And she came back and did more and, um, with us. And when I was in Germany recently, I saw her. And she's, she's still as beautiful today as she was then. And boy. She really stopped traffic. She stopped Alexander Monday right in his tracks. <laughs> the shooting in Rome, uh, I think, came about because they got tired of me saying, come on, let's go to Italy and let's make some shows in Italy. And I had lived in Italy for three years, and I kind of knew the, you know, I kind of knew the whole kind of situation over there. I knew some people. I'd made several movies there. I worked for Vittorio De Sica over there, and Blake made the Panther and there. And I, I, I just loved Italy. And, and Italy was very hot at that time. All of the whole production of the kind of international production all moved to Italy at that time. And I said, come on, let's go to Italy. Let's make a few pictures over there. And they said, OK. So we went, and Glenn Larson was writing you know, ideas as we went. We started at the top in Venice in Venezia, and we moved on down to Rome. And as we moved down and toward Capri, he was writing all of these wonderful characters. You know, as a matter of fact, um, I, I did a series, Heart to Heart, with Stephanie Powers and Lionel Stander. Lionel Stander played the character of Max. One of the characters that we had in It Takes a Thief when we were going through through Italy was a character called Max, and it was played by Lionel. I had no idea. I had forgotten all about that. And when we started off with Heart to Heart, Tom Mankiewicz called me and he said, uh, I've got the man in my office to play Max. And I walked in, and there was Lionel. And I said, oh my god, couldn't be a better choice than that. I mean, what a character. That, if we could get him to play Max, it would be great. And of course he did, and he was so wonderful in the, in the show. And, but. Yeah, Lionel, Lionel played a character, uh, a, uh, 
a uh, gangster called Max. And I had forgotten that. I had forgotten about that. You know, my, my whole desire was to have a relationship that lasted with women for a period of time. It wasn't one night stands. You know, I got involved with women and really fell in love with them. And when Malachi would show up, or somebody would say, listen, you've got to be back here, you've got to go, it, it, would, it, it was a very heart-wrenching thing for me to leave. He wasn't just, uh, you know, an on-top guy with the ladies and, and um, making fast hits and going on his way. I, I really became involved with these women because most of the time we were involved in life and death situations, uh, theatrically, you know what I mean. And, uh, the ladies, the ladies and the women really made Alexander Monday so special because they fell in love with him. Do you know? And there's nothing better than to have a woman fall in love with you. I mean, on the sc it's just a remarkable thing to have happen. And Monday had that, he fell in love with them as well. I mean, it wasn't just hey, thanks, baby, it was wonderful to see you. I mean, he was involved, deeply involved. I had this wonderful, wonderful uh, wardrobe man, Huey McFarland, and uh, he was a great friend of Fred Astaire's, and he, he took care of three of us in the business. He took care of John Forsythe, Fred Astaire, and me. And Huey had this concept, and, um, oh, gosh, um, Burton Miller, Huey and Burton, they picked out these clothes for me and, you know, we, we, took, we took risk, you know, with ascots and turtlenecks and the Nehru jacket, you know, I put, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. had that and I, uh, I grabbed that from him. I stole from everybody, you know, I mean, it wasn't just Alexander Mundy, you know, it was just a little bit of me too. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was mine. That was my line. I came up with that one. I just threw that in. I used to say that a lot, you know, to people. And it, you know, I'd see some beautiful girl and I'd go, oh, terrific. And um, so we used that a lot. Um, that was mine. Let me get this straight, Noah. You want me to steal? Let me get this straight. You want me to steal? That's the one that kind of became a, I, 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 drum, I, I run into a lot of people, even now, I run into a lot of people that come to me and say, hey, listen, can you steal that for me? You mean, you want me to steal? You know, they're doing the whole routine. To me, it was always entertainment. To me, it, the character was a man that was, he was in life, but boy, he knew how to handle it, and he had a great time doing it. And the one thing that I didn't want to do is I didn't want to get it too politically, get into a lot of politics with it or make a lot of statements with it. I always felt that it should be entertaining, that it should be, his character should motivate the people that he's with and not about some idealistic thing or something that was going on at the time. Because those things always evaporate to me. They're all, they, they always leave us, you know? And they come back in different forms, as we all know. But I was more interested in being involved and in listening to the lady I was with or what her problems were and dealing with that within our frame, within, within our, our show, within our ability to do that. So many things have changed since we made Thief. I mean, look at the technology, you know. You're photographing me without film. I couldn't imagine in my lifetime that I'd ever be standing in front of a camera and there wouldn't be film, that it wouldn't be developed, that it wouldn't be seen. Uh, look at what's happened with sound. Look at what's happened with the availability to pick that up and move it and w little light. So a lot, of a lot of that technology has changed. The big thing that's changed for me 
is like with most of the things that we're all involved with, with, with all of us, is that there's a lot of influence of corporate activity, a lot of influence of business coming into it. When we made Thief, we gambled. It was a gamble to go to Europe. It was a gamble to ca cast people. It was a gamble to shoot this or shoot that. But we took it. And that's what the business was built on, taking a risk. You know, they take risks now, but their risks are financial. Ours were emotional. You know? And I think that's the difference, that you can find people that really care about their material, that really care about the 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 nature of which it's to be made, to have that feeling, to put that effort into it, to be able to, to feel it, you know? And that's been taken out of a lot of things in our life, not only in our work and my being, having the opportunity to talk about making this wonderful series that I was in and how wonderful it was to me, but, you know, a lot of stuff has been being taken away from us, and I think it's important that we we grab onto that stuff and that we care about and hold on to it. I was nominated for the Golden Globe. Uh, obviously, I wanted to win it. <laughs> I went with my sons, and uh, I was sitting there, and uh, I was sitting next to Robert Young, and they said, the winner is Robert, and I started to move Young, and I sat back. And he turned to me and he said, don't worry, you've got plenty of time. He was a very good actor, Robert Young, and a wonderful man. But Thief, you know, Thief got a lot of awards, a lot of stuff. <clears throat> and we were always, always grateful for that because, you know, that means that the audience... The, the, biggest, the biggest reward and award we got was the fact that the audience responded to to the material and to the show, and they did. And boy, I'll tell you, it was, it was worldwide. And we had tremendous distribution with, uh, with Universal, and uh, they promoted the show tremendously. And all of a sudden, I was in 80 countries and speaking all these different languages, and it was great. I loved it. <laughs> you know, I have so many memories about working on the show, and, they come back to me often, and they're with me in my heart and my soul, obviously. But I think that the most... I was so thrilled when Fred Astaire came on the, on, on the, on the show, and he said he'd, be, he'd play my father. And I remember the day that I opened that door, and uh, F.A. was standing there. It, uh, it was really a total emotional moment for me, and I, I loved him as a person. And to have that all become, you know, a reality that he was standing there and this was going to happen was a very, very large moment in my life and in my career. I would say that that's the big one. Of course, you know, a lot of people are gone now that were involved with it. Kibbe is gone, and I will always be indebted to him because he, he wrote Alexander Monday for me, and I'm so glad that I listened to Mr. Lou Wasserman to go and meet Kibbe. I could have probably said, oh, I don't want to do this and gone on to something else, but the character of Alexander Monday and the relationship I had with them will always be with me, and it was a tremendous, tremendous time in my life and in my career, and to be able to be sitting here this many years later and, and talking about it is something I never thought would happen. So, you see what life can do. <laughs>